Hello everyone. Welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting equation with complex numbers. I call this equation interesting because first of all it's a non-standard maybe a transcendental equation because we have L and Z and Z that are very different kinds but we're talking about the ratio being equal to a constant. Hmm. So we can't solve this problem by standard means or can we? There's a way to solve it. We'll, we'll talk about that. And I'll be attempting maybe different methods, okay? Uh, I say attempting because I'm not exactly sure if it's, it's going to result in something nice, but you'll see the natural process, my thought process without a script. Sometimes I make mistakes and I don't, I'm not getting anywhere. Hopefully you don't mind because you get to see what I'm thinking. Anyways, so... We have this equation, so what do we do with that? Don't you wish that ln z would equal pi and z equals 2 at the same time? That would be awesome. It's kind of like a freshman's dream, but that's kind of too far-fetched, right? Don't you think? It's not going to happen, obviously, because if z is 2, ln z is not pi. Obviously, if we give you an equation like ln z over z equals ln 2 over 2, then you could easily say, hey, z equals 2 automatically is a solution. Million dollar question is, is that the only solution? And I'm gonna leave it open ended, okay? Because maybe in another video we can talk about this. If you know the answer, don't give it away, okay? Don't give it away for cheap, <laughs> okay? Anyways, I'm just kidding. We can definitely give it away. But now, let's see how we can handle this problem. This problem should remind you a special function, which we'll get to later. But first, I wanna do the following. I want to take advantage of the polar form. That's going to be my first method, okay? What is the polar form? If z is a complex number, you can write this in different forms. First of all, let's talk about plotting this number in the complex plane, which is also called the argon plane. This is called the real axis. This is the imaginary. And z makes a, a theta angle, theta radians with the real axis, with the positive part. And of course, it's... Uh, has a distance from zero, which we call r. Z can be expressed as a plus b i because that's the name of this channel, right? You hopefully know that. And also, we can write in polar form. Here's how the polar form works. We can write z as r times cosine theta plus i sine theta. But thanks to Euler, we can abbreviate this, shorten it, and write it as r times e to the i theta. This is just an amazing discovery. That's why Euler is just amazing, wonderful. Because think about it. Something that brings the exponential, the trigonometry, the i, everything together. It's beautiful. And you can replace theta with so many different things to get different identities. So where do we go from here? I'm going to go ahead and use this in my equation. So hopefully that will give me something nice. Let's find out. Like I said earlier, I haven't planned this, so I don't know what this is going to get, but hopefully something nice. I have a feeling that it's going to be good because look at this. This is exponential, and I'm going to natural log it. So that should give me something nice. Okay, let's find out. If you replace z with r e to the i theta, first of all, you got to notice that this gives you something cool because... First of all, you have a product, so you can kind of split it up. That would give you ln r plus i theta. By the way, this could be the definition of the natural log of a complex number. In other words, the complex logarithm. But one thing to keep in mind is theta is not the only angle that satisfies this. For example, if I added 2 pi to theta, it will bring me to the exact same point, therefore the same location and the same point. Same number. So, in other words... Instead of writing this as i theta, I could also write it as r times e to the power i times theta plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer, and this would give me basically infinitely many values. The result as a complex number is unique, like 1 plus i, 2 minus 3i, whatever, but in polar form, in trigonometric form, you can express it in infinitely many ways. Those are called branches, I think, or branch cuts or something like that. It doesn't matter, no big deal. So now, I'm just going to stick with theta now, okay, just to keep things simple. 
And at the bottom, I have this thing. Now we're gonna set it equal to pi over two. Hmm, that doesn't really give me anything nice, does it? Maybe after a while it will. Uh, I could probably just do this. Why don't I just cross multiply, hoping that something amazing will happen. And I wanna keep the pi over two before the r e to the i theta. I don't wanna separate those two things. Now here's one thing you can think about. Okay, this looks like a complex number, which I can hopefully write as pi over two r times cosine theta plus i sine theta. Okay, that's one way to approach it. And on the right hand side, I have that, and on the left hand side, I have this. Hmm. From here, can I do this? Since we have complex numbers on both sides and they're equal, first of all, let's distribute this. By the way, we have an r i here, don't forget that. Oops, r i sine theta, kind of resin theta. <laughs> okay, kind of look, it sounds like resin or ri sine. So, that is equal to ln r plus i theta. So I'm hoping that the real parts are gonna be equal and that's gonna give me a nice equation, will it? This one equals this. Okay, let's find out. So ln r equals pi over two r cosine theta and the other one is i theta. So I'm only gonna focus on the coefficient with the imaginary part. Pi over two r sine theta is gonna equal, you know what, I'm gonna write it the other way around because I'd like to divide these equations, but I could probably do that. Anyways, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna do theta equals pi over two r sine theta. And then what we could do is, we could divide this by that, okay? So when we divide, it's gonna look like this. Pi over two r sine theta divided by pi over two r cosine theta, which is gonna simplify a great deal, right? Theta over ln r. Pi over two is gonna cancel out, r is gonna cancel out. I'm gonna end up tangent theta equals theta over ln r. Now this could be somewhat problematic because you're gonna find out soon that ln r is uh-oh. But if I multiply like this, ln r times tangent theta is gonna equal theta. And here's the thing. If theta is zero, then this is satisfied. Why? because tangent zero is zero and we have a solution. If theta equals zero, then we kind of have a problem because if theta is zero, actually we don't really have a problem. We're gonna end up with ln r over r, but r is real, so I don't think that's gonna work. But anyways, at least I tried. Uh, I was hoping to get something out of this, but it didn't work. Let's go ahead and proceed with the second method that we hopefully know will work. Is it? Okay, maybe. Let's find out. So the second method involves the following. I have ln z over z equals pi over two. And then now I'd like to turn this into something that I can manipulate, okay? And that can be done by doing the following. I can write this as one over z times ln z equals pi over two. I wanna call one over z something, how about w? then this z would be one over w. So it's gonna be like w times ln one over w equals pi over two. And then I'm gonna go ahead and write this as ln w to the power of negative one, which is gonna bring a negative here like this. So I can write it like this, right? And I multiply both sides by negative one, which is the critical part that gives us the thingy, okay? <laughs> You'll see that thingy now in a little bit but I'm also, I think, gonna show you result from from alpha if I have it. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna turn this into a Lambert, Lambert's W function, and that can be done by ln W times e to the power ln W, because that's how I can write the Ws, equals this. Now, I put it in T e to the T form, and if I W it, I should be getting T from that. But I also want the right-hand side to be in that format, or at least be something like c e to the c, a constant times e to the same constant, makes sense? That can be achieved by replacing negative pi over two by negative one times pi over two, and then replacing the negative one with i squared, and then replacing i squared times pi over two with, ready, set, go, i times i pi over two. 
That's what I was trying to get at, okay? Now, why is this significant? Because if you Lambert this and that, like on both sides, let's go ahead and move this away a little bit, so we can Lambert both. So we're gonna put a big giant W here, and I'm gonna move this too, okay? And a giant W here, so that I can do this. Well, here's the thing. The argument for i is i pi over 2. So, I can write i as e to the power i pi over 2, like this. Nice. And then when I apply Lambert, it's going to be i pi over 2. Nice. The left-hand side, when I apply Lambert, is going to be ln w. Beautiful. And then uh, we are going to do e to the power. So, w is going to be e to the power i pi over 2, which is i. So I is a solution, but is I the only solution? Am I the only solution? I mean, is I the only solution? No, there's another solution, but that's for you to find because this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.